What is up gamers? Welcome back. Today we've got something really great. The creators of Entrouded have officially released a 2024 roadmap. Everything that they are looking to do in the next year with this game and I have put myself on a media lockout. I have not looked at it until I was going to be able to sit down and make a video about this. So what we're going to do, you and I together right here, very intimately, just you and me, we're just going to sit down and we're going to go ahead and walk through this roadmap and look at every point, break it down. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. And I'd love to hear down in the comments what you think about this as well. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it. And just in case you don't want to have like a live reaction version of this walking through every point you want a bit of more of a condensed version i'll also be posting one of those very soon uh probably a link in the description once it's up if you see this go check that out if you'd rather have a, a sort of a faster paced version of this all right let's go so this is what they've released this is just it's a poster basically and it just says enshrouded early access roadmap 2024 flameborn your feedback helps us make enshrouded better Here's a look at our roadmap for the next few updates based on your suggestions. So I'm just going to go down the list, basically. So first thing, we've got Hollow Halls Dungeons. Um, I think this is the screenshot that they teased right at the conclusion of the build contest. Uh, they posted a picture and there was some red and green blocks and they were teasing at new building materials. Um, and this looks like the same picture. You can see there's kind of green right there in the middle. It's not going to be the highest quality, re highest resolution, but uh, you can see we've got sort of a red material here and then something green in the middle. So maybe this isn't necessarily new building materials and this is something specific. Hopefully we can build with them because they look really cool. But maybe this is something specific to these hollow hall dungeons, um, which, I, which is really exciting. Me and my friend were talking about how much we want there to be sort of like instance dungeons you can go into for like special loot and stuff like that uh so that's really exciting uh steam deck support that's awesome obviously people who have steam decks love to tell you that they have steam decks and how things run on steam decks so that'll be good for those steam deckers performance improvements this is great i run on a really old system so um while the game still runs okay for me i'd love to uh be able to squeak out a few more frames and be able to actually play it at like a smooth 60 fps so this is going to be good for people with you know a little bit lower end systems who might want to have a little bit uh, better performance while they're playing the game or trying to stream it or anything like that. Smoother, higher FPS gameplay. Oh, smoother, high FPS gameplay. Not like you'll get more frames, but maybe at high FPS it becomes unsmooth. <laughs> I don't have that problem. It's unsmooth because my frames are low. So maybe that's something. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you've encountered. I haven't been there because I don't get a lot of frames. But if that is a thing that people have complained about, uh, that's good that they are working on that. That's awesome. Okay, next up. Location improvements. Um, I don't know what that means exactly. Cool. Maybe more locations. Maybe, I don't know. Improved loot UI. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that's not too bad. I like uh, it. It'll be easier than having to open it up and then pick what you want. Now it looks like you can hover over like the pile from killing a fell enemy and be able to like scroll through them and just pick what you want rather than having to interact with it and it pulls up a whole menu. That'll be cool, kind of looting on the go. I like that. All right, workshops craft from magic chests. Yes, this is cool. This is something I I didn't mind. Hold on, I'm gonna crack open this, this uh, rock star for you guys. <sighs> You're welcome. Uh, this is something I didn't really mind, honestly. I, I know some people were like really up in arms that magic chests just weren't that helpful and I need to be able to craft everything. And if they're going to exist, I, I understand where you're coming from. A hundred percent. Every survival game hasn't had this option at all. So like for me, I was just happy that I could craft some things at all from the chest and not every workshop obviously could like the crafting over time like the bulk crafting stations where you like put in a bunch of a material and it'll spit stuff out over time you couldn't do those but crafting at your npc crafts people or at like a workbench obviously you could to me that was good enough but this will obviously speed up that process a lot you'll be able to basically just dump everything into chests then at your base and you won't have to really worry about moving things between them and now this brings up a thought for me specifically in alchemy there are things like oh i need to make nitrate and then i need to take nitrate and bring it over here to make like black powder or something like that i, I can't remember exactly what the interactions were but there are things that go from one workshop to another workshop 
will those be able to interact with each other? Will everything be connected within the base or will you still have to take the product of a workshop out into a chest and then it can be pulled by a different workshop? That's my thought. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But anyway, moving on. Better stack splitting. Thank God, because this was obviously it didn't ruin the game, but it was something that was a little bit annoying. So I'm really glad that they are just sort of making this mechanic better. You could drop one, you could drop half, or you could drop the whole thing. But if I had like 55 of something, I couldn't drop 10. So this is better. All right, next we've got multiple NPC instances. Yes, so they talked about this in their last update about how this is something that they were going to work on. This is something they were looking at, being able to have your NPC craftspeople at each of your bases which is going to be great. That way, you know, I want to have a base at the in the beginning area and I want to have one up in the Revelwood and I want to have one in the Kindle Wastes. But then to craft anything wherever I am, I have to like summon my person and then they're not going to be there. And being able to just have one of each craftsperson at every single base in your altar, it's just going to be nice. I personally don't use multiple bases. I build one base and that's my home base and fast traveling is easy. So I don't see the need to have multiple, but people do that. And this was very inconvenient. So I'm glad that they're doing this to help kind of ease that mechanic and using those uh, craftspeople around the world in different areas. Reassignable glider shortcut. Cool. Honestly, didn't think this was an issue. I've never even thought about this, but it's cool that it will become its own keybind, and, you know, you'll be able to have a bit more uh, customization in terms of how you want that stuff to interact if you don't like it bound to your jump button. Maybe you're accidentally deploying your glider when you don't necessarily mean to, particularly if you're using the double jump and the glider. There's a chance maybe you tried to, you meant to double jump, but you jumped too late and your glider pulls out and you're flying off a mount. You know what I mean? I can understand why that might be an issue. So that's cool. Never had that issue personally, but okay. Sitting on furniture. Yes, I'm excited about this. It's like the stupidest, simplest thing in the world, but being able to sit on furniture is just going to take the like the depth and the immersion of this game and just move it, move that down the slider one more tick. I'm excited about that. Also, is that a new chair? I don't think we've seen that chair before. Am I crazy? That's not like a palm wood chair, is it? That looks cool as hell. Let me know if I'm wrong. All right. Improved post-processing. Cool. I'm down for that. Again, performance, whether it's to help performance or to help visuals, anything having to do with that side of the game, the performance and the visual processing power required or types of processing filters or approaches that you can set in your settings, that's great. I think those are all going to be huge. Next up, more trees. Personally, I'm excited about this. From a building standpoint, being able to have a bit more variety in terms of what trees you plant, I think is gonna be cool. One thing I would like to see them do, because trees, as in the building competition, I discovered trees get unreasonably large. They grow to heights unseen. It'd be cool if there was like two versions of every tree. One that's like, it'll grow to its max size and it can be this huge tree, which I think is cool to be able to plant trees that get really, really big. However, I wanna be able to plant a tree that's going to be like moderately sized. I don't need it to be ginormous. It gets in the way. I don't like it clipping through walls and floors. Anyway, moving on, that's really cool. I do like that. Round doors and windows, hobbit holes. They are coming hard for you guys. Huh? All you people who like to build your hobbit holes, I'm very jealous because I don't possess the ability to do that. I'm dumb. I think they look so cool. And this is literally a feature added specifically for you guys. I can't see people using these anywhere else. Maybe round windows, but round doors? Nah. This is cool. Even look at it. It's supposed, it's the Shire. It's Hobbiton, all right? So that's really cool. I really like that they are doing that. That's going to be really cool and lead to some really creative builds now, I think. Just that feel complete. All right, potted plants. All right, cool. Another decorative thing that I'm going to be all about. I assume those are just going to use clay, probably come from the carpenter. I can get excited about that. Funny enough, in one of the builds, I saw someone used the crucible that you use to make the uh, smelter for the blacksmith. And I assume they like put a piece of dirt and planted a plant and then set the crucible like around it. And it the crucible looked like a big old pot for a plant. And I thought that was really, really creative, but now they're gonna have this. But whoever that was, I don't know who that was. It was from one of the nominated builds in the build competition. Um, it was like one of the earlier ones, I think that they went through on stream, on Rubius' stream. But that one, that was really cool. That was something I'd not seen anyone do before. And I thought was super, super creative. Shouts out to whoever that was. Potted plants, anyway. New building materials. Yes, this is what they hinted at with this picture. They were like, oh, new building materials. They're like, oh, red and green, cool. 
They're using that picture for something else. New building materials. Again, we see red and green hues. Obviously, this is like a lore piece, so it's glowing with that like red, pink, mist, aura, magic nonsense. But I like this. This is going to lead to some really cool aesthetics that are going to be achieved with just a wider color palette available. I think that's going to end up being a really cool addition to the building side of this game. Moving forward, replayable world quests. Okay, so... This is interesting to me. I know they talked about having separate player and server quest progression. That way a player who joins an active world already can still like gain the XP and go do all these quests that have already been done by the rest of the players on that server and not lose out on content essentially. I don't really know why I'd want to replay a quest unless it's for like the sake of, oh, I need to go find another loom. I don't remember where that was. And I can just pull up the loom quest and go do it again. Maybe it'll help for leveling. I'm not sure. Cool. I like the idea of making content replayable. I'm not anti in any way. I'm just trying to think of logically why you would want to do that. But anyway, moving forward. Better quest sorting. This is great. I know that they talked in one of their previous updates about the uh, quest journal getting an overhaul. Obviously, these are both going to be part of that and um, just, you know, making making the journal a bit easier to navigate and search through and find what you're looking for. And obviously, if you're, if you're going to be able to replay quests, then this will help. Server gameplay settings. Okay. Now, so this makes me think um, I never actually played Pal World, but my buddy who I've done all my building with, he has played Pal World. And this makes me wonder, like, if you can tweak like resource gathering multipliers or like resource gathering speed or XP gathering speed gameplay settings like that. Like I know you can do in Pal World or is that something different? If you guys have any idea what this means specifically, let me know in the comments below. I'm not super sure what that means, but I like server control and this leads into the next one. Server user rights. I like this being added to the game. Uh, I know people have had a lot of issues with playing in um, public servers and not putting passwords or having people join that they thought were their friends and then they like just take all their shit. And I like being able to have a lot more control of what's happening in your server that you're hosting on your end. I like that. I think that's all really good improvements. Townsfolk NPCs. Oh, I'm excited about this. Oh, that's so sick, actually. So I don't know what these are going to be. Obviously, they're not going to be like craftspeople. I don't think you're going to be able to go up to them and, you know, hey, can you craft me a beer? You know what I mean? Like at like a bartender, kind of like a, you know, innkeep NPC. But being able to have people, it would be really cool if they would kind of just like have zones they could roam around in too. So you could have like people walking around your settlements rather than just being these like fixture pieces that don't move. I don't know. But... This opens up a whole variety of things, just being able to populate builds with more people. I'm really excited about that. Really intrigued by what we're seeing here. It kind of looks like, this guy kind of looks like a pirate. That guy actually looks like a pirate. Uh, but it looks like we've got like a variety of outfits. Like this guy kind of almost looks like a, like a warrior, or like a guard or something like that. I don't know. These are, these are maybe a mage even. Um, really cool. Vanity system. Ooh, ooh. Does that mean like transmogging like can i wear like the best set of armor but make it look like a different set of armor because i like the way that one looks but i want the stats from the other one because if that's what's happening i'm gonna come uh, this is awesome uh, any sort of vanity system if that's what this is if i'm understanding what i'm reading here this is awesome because i think that the the armor sets in this game and all the weapons and everything look really cool but some of them like you get a cool looking weapon and then all of a sudden you have a better one that looks lame or you know your next armor set you don't like the look of as much but it's got way better stats and you have to use it i want to be able to equip that but i want to look how i want to look you know what i'm saying so if that's the way this works i'm really excited about that editable sign this is going to be good. Huge for storage. I actually love that they used a chest as the image for this. This is going to be super cool just for being able to label chests or I think signage for even like builds. Being able to put up street signs or a sign on the outside of a building that's like, I don't know, Blue Goblet in or you know what I mean? Like it's hopefully just going to add a bit more life uh, to builds if you're able to implement that in the right way. But also it's going to be really good for labeling like my chest don't touch stupid you know what i'm saying musical instruments okay cool is this a, a sneak peek at a townsperson maybe we can have a, a local bard musical instruments can be cool i 
So seeing this really makes me feel like they're trying to lean into making the multiplayer experience much more, maybe MMO-like isn't the right way to describe it. But the way that the multiplayer plays in this game right now is very, all right, gang, we're all on. Now let's go kill stuff and gather materials and play through this quest and then go fight this boss. Whereas I feel like in, I don't know, in, in MMOs, people will hang out, if that makes sense. Adding something fun like this that doesn't really make a difference, but it's just another fun little interaction, like adding emotes, being able to sit on furniture is gonna be really cool for this. Being able to have someone sit there and play a loot in your inn that you made and everyone's sitting in chairs around a fireplace, you know, like, it's just gonna create such a cool environment and experience in game that I'm really excited to see how this really gets implemented. There's still so many to go through. Oh my God, here we go. All right, so we've got townsfolk NPCs, but then townsfolk pets, I'm excited about. That's gonna be cool. I just don't think there, there's any two ways to go about that, that that's not cool. If that means a pet of the town, like, oh, let me catch one of these rabbit thing or like the deer things, or I don't know. And it will just sort of hang out in the town as a domesticated version, or if it is a pet of a specific townsperson. Either way, I think that's cool. And again, it's just gonna help add life to the game. Animal farming. I know people have been asking for this. People are like, I wanna run a farm. Like I saw a post on the Reddit. It was like, me and my fiance wanna run a farm. We wanna plant vegetables and stuff. And we want to like do animal farming. We wanna be able to get sheep or goats or whatever in these things and put them in pens. This is great. So which means that I can't remember the word. It sounds weird. And anytime I hear it, I feel like it means something else. But being able to make the animals reproduce and like actually farm them, that's gonna be cool because then, oh, I need animal fur. I've got some animals I can get some animal fur from, you know what I'm saying? That'll be cool. Enemy patrols. This is intriguing to me. Does this mean that like, there will just be random scavenger patrols walking around the world? Or they will like patrol points of interest? Cause they kind of already do that. Does that mean that they could potentially patrol to your base and almost sort of act like a, like a getting raided interaction? I think that would be really crazy. It would make building like defenses for your town, like way more valuable like putting up walls and having doors that would be really crazy that'd be super cool whole totally different dynamic going on there but if that's what that means that's really cool if this is just there'll be more enemies that aren't wildlife just out in the world also i think that's cool but yeah i'd like to see a bit more of what that means as well weather system this is cool this is i'm excited for this because as far as i know there's no rain and there's not like storms or anything like that it's just a day night cycle so adding weather would be awesome again it's going to be something that will add to the depth and the the feel and the energy of the world that we're going to be in here this is going to be really really cool i can just i can already see people building like like a like a dark mage tower castle thing and it's all twisty and evil looking and it's raining and it's nighttime and like it'll just you'll be able to make these like such cool environments with weather being added mountains biome heck yeah if you guys haven't already seen my short if you don't know what this is uh it's somewhere up there up somewhere you can check out that short you can get to this in a couple of spaces already on the map uh, just to kind of see what the biome is about, but obviously it's going to unlock the whole biome, which will add a bunch of stuff. This is exciting. We've been able to see it since day one. We've been able to see the big mountains, but not get to them. So I'm excited to see what this all means and what this brings in terms of gameplay changes. Portals to other servers. That's really interesting. Hmm. I don't really know what this is going to be, you know? Like, I, I really like this because genuinely, if I'm like playing on my world, and I wanna go join my buddy's server. Because, you know, oh, I'm over here, but hey, you know, you wanna go, play, especially when new content comes out. Hey, you wanna go, we're gonna go do the new, the, the new quests. Let's go play the new content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could just leave the game and then go join a server. But if I could do it in world, be like, yeah, I'm on my way, run through a portal and join his world through a portal. It's just one one more thing. It's all of the immersion. A lot of this stuff has, has a lot to do with immersion and just adding a variety of experiences and environments and vibes. Yeah, I, I think this is gonna be really cool in, in terms of like an immersion stand. Nameable bases, this is huge. We could have used this during the uh, build contest. 
just for being able to navigate to the correct altars, but clearly they know what needs to be done. So this is cool. This will be great just for staying organized. And, and you know, that's just a general quality of life thing. I like that. Nameable map locations. I like this as well. The map marker system was cool that we had it at all, but it was very rudimentary. And here's a color, here's a symbol, drop it. And you have to just remember what it is. There's four colors and four symbols. Like That's not a lot. So being able to drop it and be like, iron deposit or something like that. I think that's way better. So that's gonna be really great. I'm excited for that. Multiplayer pings. This is cool. I like this because there was no good way to give directions to someone you were playing with. <laughs> like when I was trying to build something with my buddy, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so this is great. Multiplayer pings is gonna be awesome. Named tombstones, just don't die and it doesn't matter. I'm just kidding. I've died multiple times. It happens. This is gonna be good just so you know whose tombstone is who. New enemies and bosses. Hmm, I'm just trying to discern what I can. This is a skeleton. This has to be a skeleton, like a skeleton witch. Looking at the foot and the leg, very bony. And the skeletons have this green, like fiery glow inside of them. So this kind of looks like a fell sickle scythe boss type of attack thing. Maybe like the floating fell enemy witch lady things, but a skeleton version. So that might just be a new enemy type. Maybe that's a boss, but very exciting. New enemies and bosses, I'm very excited for it. Obviously more bosses, more fun, more enemies, more variety, more fun, more game, more fun. So this is all gonna be good stuff. Fixes and polishing. This is probably the most generic thing they could have put, but this ties into like a lot of what they have up here. So fixes and polishing, awesome. This is great. Cleaning things up, taking out some bugs. You know, that's all good stuff. We can all get excited about that. So let me have this one more section at the bottom. Uh, here's a glimpse at some other major features coming later this year in our early access. So next few updates. So this is like coming soon, I guess, by the verbiage. Like these will be in the next handful of updates and these things will be later. Oh my God, I'm peeking ahead. I'm gonna try not to. Sharing and visiting of bases. This is awesome. This is so cool because being able to, I don't know, just directly do this is so much better than like, join my world and teleport up here. If I could be like, invite someone to my base off of my Steam friends list, and they could just over to my base. We all knew what that was. It would just, it would be so cool. And then also it would help with more build competitions in the future where sharing the base was not the most straightforward experience. Uh, this is really cool. This is gonna be really dope if implemented well. Uh, create and share gameplay experiences. No, no, that means we're gonna be able to like make dungeons and make puzzles and like make, this is like Enshrouded's version of UEFN. If you guys have, I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't, wake up, it's 2024. Obviously it's not the same thing, but what this says, create and share gameplay experiences to me sounds like make your own game in our game since they already have an incredible build system. Can you imagine taking some of these builds, taking the Dragon Temple build that won the Architects of Wonder competition and being able to make a gameplay experience out of it. Make a story, make dungeons and rooms and things to go collect and like, dude, oh my God, this is gonna be so cool. World events, I speculated that they might do something like this and I'm really excited to see this on the list. I really am because this is, Again, it's gonna push this more toward like a survival MMO type of experience. And I think this is gonna be so dope, depending on how this works, if it's like once a day or once a week or, you know, however the cycle works on how these are triggered or whatever it is, is gonna be such a fun mechanic to add to an already really fun game. Super excited about that. Instanced dungeons. I literally said this earlier. I'm so excited about this. I don't know how this is gonna work. Obviously these are coming later. So there's gonna be the new biome, the mountain biome. So probably a level cap increase, new new stuff, new enemies. So these instance dungeons, I don't know exactly how these are gonna work, but this is gonna be really cool. I hope it's for like high tier loot or, you know, I think it would be really cool if they did stuff like this, maybe in conjunction with the with the world events where you could earn exclusive rewards. Like maybe there's an armor set that's only available through these specific things, or maybe it's not even a better armor, but it's a new colorway of an armor set. Like, oh, I really like the adventurer armor set 
but I wish it was a different color. I wish it was all like white or blue or something. And you could get these like variations that are specific to these dungeons or events. I think that would be so sick. I'm I'm talking out of my ass. I, this is not what this means. I'm speculating and, and just putting my wish list out there. I think instance dungeons are gonna be really fun. I think they're gonna be replayable. They're probably gonna be pr pretty tough, which is gonna be good for the people who say this game is way too easy and there's no content, and there's nothing to do, blah, blah, blah. There you go. These are gonna be awesome. More biomes. I'm excited for this. We're obviously already getting the mountains, but whatever more looks like, if it's like tropical jungle or, you know, a beach biome, whatever these look like, I'm really, really excited for the future. Um, I feel like they have a pretty good variety already, so I'm just excited to see what they do uh what more means so and then last up we've got water we already had proof confirmation screenshots and receipts that they were gonna do this at four million copies sold they said so so we were gonna hold them to it but they put it on the roadmap it's officially happening we're gonna get water which i'm excited about because honestly while i like using luminous block to emulate water i think having actual water would be really cool flowing water it's, again, it's just one of those things that's gonna be, gonna add more depth, more realism, more immersion. If we can swim in it, imagine the crazy things people are gonna come up with. Anyway, that's super cool, I'm excited. Uh, and then at the bottom it says, Enshrouded is getting bigger and better, and it's all thanks to you. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for taking part in our early access. Keen. All righty gang. What do you guys think? Let me know. I Honestly, <laughs> I'm super excited. This sounds awesome. We're gonna have Hollow Halls Dungeons, Steam Deck support, performance improvements, smoother high FPS gameplay, location improvements, improved loot UI, workshops craft from magic chests, better stack splitting, multiple NPC instances, reassignable glider shortcuts, sitting on furniture, improved post-processing, more trees to grow, round doors and windows, potted plants, new building materials, replayable world quests, better quest sorting, server gameplay settings, server user rights, townsfolk NPCs, vanity system, and editable signs, musical instruments, townsfolk pets, animal farming, enemy patrols, weather systems, mountains biome will be coming soon, portals to other servers, nameable bases, nameable map locations, multiplayer pings, named tombstones, new enemies and bosses, fixes and polishing. Those are all said to be coming in their next few updates. So relatively soon. And then we have a list of later this year in early access, sharing and visiting of bases, creating and sharing gameplay experiences, world events, instance dungeons, more biomes and water. So that is a ton a ton of new stuff coming obviously it's gonna roll out in chunks we're gonna get pieces here and there and eventually we'll get it all but i seriously am so excited by this i i i know they'd hinted at a roadmap and i kind of expected it to be like five things so them coming out with 36 points in the near future with another six for later this year that's a lot. That's a lot of things. And even if some of them were simple, like potted plants, like these are all, every single one of these improvements are going to take this game further and further toward, in my opinion, being one of the best games that we're going to see this year. I'm super excited. Thank you guys again so much for watching. If you liked this sort of live reaction walkthrough, let me know in the comments, like the video and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, I'm super excited for the future of what Keen has for us in Enshrouded and what the next updates and maybe into 2025 is going to look like. Yeah, I, that's all I've got for you guys. And as always, keep creating, keep innovating, and happy gaming.